My name is Rijn de Wilde. I am the Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences of this faculty. And it's my honor to officially open this conference. Welcome to Maastricht and to our university. Maastricht, they tell you here in Maastricht, is the oldest city of the Netherlands. Well, of course, we all can guess that that is a contested claim. Cities today compete in all kinds of areas, isn't it? But what can hardly be disputed is that our university is the youngest university of this country. <laughs> Established in the 70s, not as a former polytechnic, but brand new. A compensation for closing the coal mines in the most southern part of the Netherlands. And that's where you are. You hardly can be more into the south. The 70s were an idealistic period. We all know that. And that was also the case in higher education. So the founders of our university introduced a new kind of academic learning. No big lectures, but small groups. No listening to the professor anymore, but formulating research questions yourself as students. No faculty chairing those small groups, but students do it themselves. And linked to those innovations was a kind of teaching and research that should go beyond disciplinary boundaries. So we have, and we still have, interdisciplinary health sciences instead of only medicine. Innovation studies instead of just economics. And in my own faculty, interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary humanities programs reaching out to social sciences, especially to political science and the social study of science and technology. Well, for sure, since those days, over the decades, we had to compromise. Actually, we sit in one. This is a lecture hall, isn't it? It wasn't foreseen in the 70s when they all started. And this is not my own faculty. This is the business school. But I can assure you that we have lecture halls too, although not this size. Most of the teaching still happens in small groups of originally 12 students nowadays, because of also financial burdens, 15 students. So still, we would say, small groups. Yet at some moments in a course, lectures can be very efficient, whatever the education experts may say. The, interdis the interdisciplinarity, though, is still here today. We did not compromise on that. It even got an institutional footing. In very few universities, humanities and social sciences can be found in one faculty or one school, as is the case here in Maastricht. We cherish the, the cooperation not only on that institutional level, even more so we do so content-wise. In almost all our teaching and research programs, we try to combine the concise and critical reading of traditions and sources, old and new, uh, the typical strongholds of the humanities, with ethnographic and other social sciences methods and theories. And it is only, it's, and I think we also need to do that if you want to address present day issues and needs in a credible way. Well, I do not have to sell our programs to you, isn't it? Uh, I told you this because it makes you understand, I hope, why we are so honored to host this 21st Congress of the International Research Society for Children's Literature. More frequently than literature for grown-ups, if I'm not mistaken, children's literature has been studied in an interdisciplinary fashion. And this time you even made it into a central team, a central team of this conference, linking stories and images to all kinds of media user practices as science and technology studies should call it. From book reading to TV viewing, from cartooning, stories to gaming, and this all not just studied in Western but also in global settings. So especially this time, this conference, the script of this conference matches closely what we try to do and what we try to stand for in Maastricht. 
And this is no coincidence, I guess, uh, because, of course, in cooperation with the organization, we were the organizers also of this conference. And I want to thank the organizers for this, to our norms, huge endeavor. And first of all, Lise Wesseling, she's just sitting here. She has a background in English literature, and currently she is the director of our Center for G Gender and Diversity, and soon to be the chairholder of a special chair in what we call uh, <coughs> women's studies, but in the broader sense it's called in Dutch the Opsij chair. Lies, in the conference book, I noticed the lineup, and I also read some of the abstracts, and I'm pretty sure that this conference will be worth the effort. And there were a lot of efforts, you know, in the preparation. Uh, I, I'm aware of that. But let us not forget the other members of your local team. Lee Green Hollanders, Wilma Lieben, and all their collaborators. We would not have been able to organize all this without their hard work. Many thanks for that. Thank you. <laughs> to you all, have a nice day in Maastricht and a fruitful conference. And now it's my pleasure to give the floor to the president of your organization, Mavis Reiner. my name on the program, but I insisted on uh, being uh, entitled to stand up and uh, uh, acknowledge Dean De Vilde and uh, Maastricht University, uh, and to thank them on behalf of the board of the IRSCL uh, for hosting the IRSCL Congress. Uh, we know that uh, the Congress convener, Dr. Lise Vessling, uh, is a very competent, uh, highly organized, uh, and uh, inspirational leader, but nevertheless, she couldn't have done the uh, conference on her own uh, without being supported by her colleagues and by the administrators she reports to. So thank you very much. Hartliche Denken. Is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> I think now you'll hear from me. Dear colleagues, welcome indeed. After two years, of hard work on the organization of this event, it is truly exciting to now finally see it come alive with your real arrival here in Maastricht. We have been looking forward to meeting you in the flesh for quite some time now. There is a difference, after all, between the online and the offline worlds, even though the two are closely intertwined and continually shape and transform each other. Exactly how they do so is part of this conference's theme. During the coming four days, we will concern ourselves with the place and function of children's literature in the context of other media for instructing and entertaining children and youth. The richness of the conference program proves how topical and urgent these research themes are. You have responded to our conference call with such a great variety of paper proposals that I would be hard put to summarize the conference program. However, there are two red threads that stand out and that I would like to briefly mention here. The first focal point of many conference papers concerns children's acquisition of literacy in today's multimedia culture. Is emergent literacy uniquely dependent on books or do electronic and digital media also offer opportunities for acquiring skills within the areas of linguistic competence, literary competence and cultural literacy? And how do interactive digital media redesign the roles of both authors and readers? The second focal point of this conference concerns the ways in which stories and images circulate between media. More specifically, many conference papers address issues of cross 
cultural adaptation. Take, for instance, the example of the 19th century story A Dog of Flanders, set in Antwerp and written in English by the French-British author Marie-Louise de la Remée, otherwise known as Huida. After a whole series of adaptations to the movie screen, including Japanese animations, this story became such a hit in Japan that Japanese tourists visit the city of Antwerp every year in great numbers to pay homage to the statue of the two main characters of this story, the boy Nello and his dog Patrash. Their journey resembling something what one could best call a modern pilgrimage. So these tourists worship at the shrine of Nello and Patras in Antwerp. More than anything, stories for and about children have a way of crossing the boundaries between nations and continents through adaptation. Inquiry into their international and intermedial mobility opens up a unique point of entry into the dynamic interactions between different national cultures. And what better forum for presenting the results of such research could one hope for but the biennial conferences of the IRSCL, given the truly cosmopolitan nature of its membership with members from more than 40 countries worldwide. The ambition of this conference is to promote interdisciplinary approaches to the topics at hand that span the gap between the humanities and the social sciences. And after the Dean's opening speech, this ambition should not be a surprise to you anymore. For there are not only texts out there, there are not only artifacts out there, but there are also authors, publishers, and readers out there, or, in different words, producers, distributors, and consumers. They need to be studied, all of them, if we want to understand how older and newer media shape our most fundamental notions of children and childhood. Therefore, it is wise to not only rely upon methods for textual analysis, but to also resort to methods for studying social behaviors. And of course, as can be expected, the best standards here will be set by our five keynote speakers, and you're looking at one of them over here. With 12 parallel sessions for every time slot, there is a lot to choose from. In order to help you pursue your own line of interest during this conference, we have given panels on similar topics, identical names, but different numbers, such as cross-cultural adaptation, one, two, three, and four. That's a bit like Rocky, one, two, three, four. <laughs> We've done our best to schedule these panels asynchronously so that delegates with a particular interest in this topic can attend all three, four, five of them. What we do not wish to encourage, however, is switching between panels while they are going on. There will hardly be enough time to move from one room to another after individual lectures and good riddance to all that, as far as we're concerned, because it tends to generate a lot of distraction. And that brings me to the practicalities of this conference. First of all, it is crucial that presenters stick to their time slot. That is, 30 minutes, including 10 minutes for discussion, and I would like to urge our moderators to be quite ruthless here, <laughs> brutal if necessary, because there are some 300 delegates attending this conference. And the only way in which things can run smoothly is that we all act on time. Please give yourself ample time to move from one conference location 
to another and from one conference room to another. This means, for instance, that you give yourself 10 minutes or so uh, to go from the cafeteria to a conference room after lunch so that the afternoon panels can all start half past one sharp. And it's also wise uh, to convene with your other panelists and your moderators a few minutes uh, before the panel session act actually starts so you can get your act together. As to finding your way around, you've already had a taste of that while coming over here. And you might want a little help with that during the beginning of the conference. Luckily, we have a great conference crew at our disposal. And if yours and Ulas would kindly stand up for a minute, uh, you can recognize them by their funky t-shirts uh, with the beautiful conference logo on front. Uh, these are your men. We also have women. Uh, when you go from the conference venue to the reception this afternoon, which is in another building, uh, you can quite simply follow the crew members from this building to the other one. And you can do the same thing tomorrow. Just follow the black t-shirts <laughs> on their way from the lecture hall where we are now to the various conference rooms. This building used to be a monastery. And it's a bit of a labyrinth as such, but you'll find your way around soon enough, I trust. We also hope that you will find your way around the city of Maastricht. Like Rijn de Wilde said, this is the oldest city which houses the youngest university in the Netherlands. And I hope you come to understand why we are very proud of both of them. We feel it's appropriate, therefore, that the city of Maastricht has sponsored your welcome reception this afternoon and that the municipal library will host the conference dinner coming Tuesday. The cultural program has been designed so as to give you a taste of Dutch and Flemish children's literature and film. And Mavis just gave me a note. <laughs> Uh, and she asked me to announce that the award ceremony, ceremony, so the awards, the IRCL awards, will be presented at the membership meeting uh, and not on Wednesday morning, as has been announced in the program. We'll remind you of this uh, later on. Talking about black t-shirts, by the way, of course, there's one for me too which I'm now going to put on. <laughs> so as to get down to business and to roll up our sleeves. Just the right size, isn't it amazing? <laughs> Thanks to our organizing committee. And now that I'm in proper attire, I declare this conference to be opened. <laughs> I wish us all very fruitful and inspiring days and I happily give the floor to our first keynote speaker.